protect this your president, and of course, colleagues of his education. May I say this opportunity to welcome you all to another edition of the Professor Inaugural Lecture of Columbus University. Of course, this is the Warampo Inaugural Lecture to be delivered by another distinguished professor of this great university. This time around, she is Professor Kusura Tsuluwa Kemi Akikola. Can we give her a round of applause? While you know that recognition will be going immediately after the program, let me quickly recognize the presence of the active chancellor of Federal University of Agriculture and Seputa, in person of Professor Mishola Tabatukekaidi. Also, you know that the deputy chancellor of Academic Professor Christopher Ikeudi, and of course, the university librarian Professor Mishola Mishola Of course, the procession is about to enter the hall for the commencement of the inaugural lecture to be delivered by Professor Usrat Oluwa Kemi Adikola, the wife and other distinguished personality, distinguished administrator of this great university. Dr. Mondanda Adikola, who currently is the Registrar of the Federal Office of Public Education. After the winter, she's going to be one of the major members of Let's give him a round of applause. When you hear the Kola family, you talk of academic, you talk of university administration. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I implore you all to please rise as we have the academic procession into the hall. Thank you very much. Principal officers and other distinguished officers of this university, under the leadership of our American Chancellor, Professor Ayodeji Olayuka Johnson. I will give them a round of applause. Leading the procession is the acting dean, student affairs, Dr. Maruf Oladimeji. Dr. Maruf Oladimeji is followed by the dean, faculty of environmental studies, Dr. Oyinloye. Michael Abiodo. He is closely followed by the acting dean, faculty of engineering, Dr. Abayomi Layeni. Next to Dr. Layeni is the dean, faculty of agricultural production and renewable resources, Professor Akim Awujobi. Also on the procession is the dean, faculty of agricultural management and rural development. He is Professor Deron Awutude. Professor Diran, who today is closely followed by the Dean Faculty of Arts, Professor Samson Dare. Next to Professor Dare is the Dean Faculty of Pharmacy, Professor Latif Saka Kasim. Next to the Dean Faculty of Pharmacy is the Dean Faculty of Clinical Sciences, Professor M.B. Petuga. Professor Petuga is closely followed by the Dean Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, Professor O.A. Ogundaunsi. Next to Professor Ogundaunsi is the Dean Faculty of Science, Professor Lawrence Adibajo. Of course, the acting dean is the next person to him. He's no any other person than Professor uh, Dr. Bade Akirimade. Dr. Akirimade, of course, is the Dean Faculty of Law. He's closely followed by the Dean Faculty of Education, Professor Olufemi Kalesonwo. Professor Kalesawo is expected to be followed by the Dean Faculty of Ag Administration, Professor, I mean Faculty of Social Sciences, Professor Israel Ajewole Ademiluyi. Professor Ademiluyi is followed by the Dean Faculty of Administration and Management Sciences, Professor R.O.C. Shomoye. Next to Professor Shomoye is the Provost College of Engineering and Environmental Studies, Dr. Bashir Odufuwa. Dr. Odufuwa is closely followed by the
Provost, College of Agricultural Sciences, Professor Adewale Onosoya. Professor Onosoya is followed now by the Provost, PG School, Professor O.A. Lawal, Olusegun Adebayo Lawal. Next to Professor Lawal is the University Bossa, Mr. Semiu Makinde. And of course, the University Liberian, Dr. Adebambo Oduwole. Mr. Femi Ugumoju is the Registrar of the University, is ably represented by Mr. Tunde Uluite Adikoya. Next to Mr. Adikoya is the Dean, is the, Prof, is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Shas Olufemi Adikoya. Professor Adikoya is followed by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Olatudu Oderinde. And of course, the inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Busurat Oluwakemi Adekola. <laughs> Professor Adekola is, is being honored by our maybe by Chancellor, Professor Ayodeji Olayinka Johnson Abuola. Can we give them a round of applause, please? <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, other distinguished personality at the high table, distinguished member of the audience, it is my pleasure to now invite the Registrar of this great university, and of course the Secretary of Council, who is ably represented by a former Registrar of Crawford University and a Deputy Registrar in this university, Mr. Tunde Oluite Adikoya, who in turn will invite the Vice Chancellor of this great university, Professor Ayodeji Abuola, to declare this inaugural lecture open. Mr. Registrar, sir. Shall we have a seated? <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, Principal Officers of the University, Provost and Deans, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, I welcome all of you most warmly to Olabisi on the University. We are here gathered to witness the 104th in the series of inaugural lectures to be organized by this university. And uh, the inaugural lecturer for today is Professor Busra Tulua Kemi Adekola. It is my pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ayodeji Olayenka Abuola, to declare this inaugural lecture open. Mr. Vice Chancellor. The principal officers of the university, provosts, deans, heads of department here present, other members of Senate, our former vice chancellor, our professor, our philosophy of the The vice chancellor of the Artic Vice Chancellor of UNAM, where it's okay, we also welcome. And of course, I can recognize the former Deputy Vice Chancellor, former Deputy Governor of the state, and a distinguished Senator in his own right, Senator Kaka, the Royal Highnesses, other spiritual. Uh, fathers and mothers that are here, members of the university community, on behalf of Senate of this great university, I hereby declare this inaugural lecture open. It is also my pleasure to invite the, pro uh, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ayodeji Abuola, to formally introduce the inaugural lecturer. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I ask the inaugural lecturer of today, 
Professor Busulat Oluwakemi Adekola to stand and remain standing. Professor Busrat Uluwakemi Adekola was born on January 15, 1970, in Ibiade Ogwatasai local government area of Ogu State. She attended the local government primary school, Ibiade, for her primary education between 1975 and 1981. Before proceeded to the community high school, Ibiade, where she packed a West African school certificate in 1986. And her quest for further education took her to the then Ogo State College of Education in Jagu Ode in 1987 for a national certificate of education. Thereafter, she proceeded to the then Ogo State University, now Olapisi Onabajo University, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts Education in English Language in 1997, Master's of Education and Doctor of Philosophy degree in Language Education in 1999 and 2010, respectively. The inaugural lecturer of today actually joined the service of Olabisi Olabajo University Agowe in the year 2000 as a junior research fellow at the Institute of Education and later on moved to the Department of Curriculum Studies and Instructional Technology, now known as Art and Social Science Education. And through the date of hard work, resilience and commitment to excellence, Professor Adekola rose through the ranks to become a professor of curriculum studies to language education on October 1st, 2019. I think a round of applause for her. <laughs> Apart from teaching various courses in an area of specialization, Professor Adekola has successfully supervised several undergraduate students' projects, many master degree dissertations, and co-supervised over five PhD theses. She's currently the director of Olabisi Olabajo University Ventures. We are the caller Mama Bread. Money must come in. And as at various times served the university breathlessly in many other capacities, including the level and course advisors of their graduate, regular assessor between the year 2000 to 2010, a very long period. <laughs> Member Department Examination Officer, Faculty Sessor Coordinator, Chairperson Faculty Library Committee, Member OU South School Management Board, Subdean Faculty of Education, <laughs> Member Faculty Board of Studies, Member Olabi Solaba University Examination Board, Member Olabi Solaba University Students Disciplinary Committee, Chairperson Faculty Social Committee, Head Part Time Degree Studies, Member CC Disciplinary Committee, Chairperson Teacher Training, Teacher Registration Council Committee, and of course, Faculty Program Review Committee, to mention but a few. Outside the world of this university, as part of our service to the nation, Professor Adekola has contributed to the educational development locally and internationally. She's a member of the Governing Council of the Fonte University of Shubo, and by extension, a member of the Appointment and Promotion Committee of that same institution. The inaugural lecturer has served the institution in different capacities and the most recent being as a member of the Fonte University search team on the appointment of the new Vice Chancellor. 
She was also a JAMS professor for four consecutive years, 2010 to 2013. And she's currently the Worldwide Education Secretary of Nasaru Life Fatal Society, NAFSAT. A reputable researcher and academic par excellence, Professor Adekola has over 35 publications to her credit, including two publications um, contributed to booths and conference proceedings. She has also attended several local and international conferences, workshops, dialogues, and colloquia where she presented well researched papers. A recipient of many awards from within and outside the university, Ms. Adekola belonged to many professional bodies, including Curriculum Organization of Nigeria, CON, Reading Association of Nigeria, National Association of Educational Research and Evaluation, English Language Teacher Association of Nigeria, and Teacher Registration Council of Nigeria, among others. She's also a renowned community person. Of course, you can see the Yala Salatu, they are all here in the hall. Um, um, a woman of many parts, Professor Akola, Akola has served as patroness to many social clubs, chairperson PTA of many schools, and president 1986 said, All Students Association of the Community High School, Ibiadi. It is worthy of note that the inaugural lecturer is the third in the Department of Art and Social Science Education and second in an area of specialization to deliver an inaugural lecture. <laughs> Professor Nicola has also served as the branch zona and national executive committee of Nasser Life Fatia Society, which is NAFSAT, and currently the Ortoin Iya Suna of Nukobe, Oguatasai, Nukobe area. I hope I pronounce it well. Nukobe. <laughs> All right. And finally, which is the most important aspect of it, because without the pillar, I'm very sure she cannot be here. Professor Busurat Uluakemi Adekola is happily married to the registrar of UNAP. Dr. Abdul Hakim Adebola Adekola. Of course, the man is currently on leave uh, from this university. It's also still part of me here. Uh, it is one leg in, one leg out. Uh, having been appointed as the Registrar of Federal University of Agricultural Since 2017. And that union is blessed with children and grandchildren, among whom is one of us in the Department of Microbiology, Dr. Abdul Afiz Adrian Sayo Adekola. Distinguished audience, join me in welcoming Professor Busurat to the podium to declare this vinyl for inaugural lecture. Graduate school and colleges, deans of faculties, heads of departments, distinguished professors and members of Senate, distinguished colleagues and friends from other institutions, your royal highnesses, 
and other traditional shapes, my love, spiritual, and temporal, distinguished clerics and missionaries, all members of the university community, gentlemen of the press, great OEIs, great OEIs, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish to start by being thankful to the Almighty Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, who has made today possible. I glorify and adore his name, saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Lalemin, Shukra. It gladdens my heart to deliver today the 104th inaugural lecture of this great citadel, the 19th from my faculty, the Faculty of Education, and the third from the Department of Arts and Social Sciences Education. The lecture is distinct for three spe uh, special reasons. First, the inaugural lecture of today is a proud product and one of the greatest attestations to the quality of the part-time program of this university, having obtained our first degree through the B.Ed. Sandwich program of the Faculty of Education. Second, today's inaugural lecturer is the first doctoral graduate of the defunct Department of Curriculum Studies and Instructional Technology, CSIT, and indeed, the first PhD product of the entire Faculty of Education to give an inaugural lecture in this university. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am proud to inform you and this August gathering that the lecturer of today, sorry, the lecture of today will be delivered by a professor of this university who is privileged to have earned a bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees from Olabisi or Noba and Joy University. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am greatly delighted and fulfilled as I stand before you to deliver this lecture. This is a mission accomplished, for it marks the climax of my obedience to the voice of my father, who had said repeatedly and passionately, Kemi, don't allow the world to cheat you. You must read. He always accompanied his administrative instruction with a severe threat invoking an imaginary sharp cutlass, saying, if you allow the world to cheat you, I'll be the first to behead you. My father mandated, instructed, and encouraged me to strive to be addressed as Professor Usurat Oluwakemi. When I got married, my brilliant, hardworking, and handsome husband, Dr. Ablakim Adebola Adekola, built a magnificent mansion on the foundation laid by my father, late Shiv Musiliu Adesombo Adefesogi. I moved into the house with a focused mind full of prayers, patience, and perseverance so that I would get a comfortable chair. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I got the comfortable, the comfortable beautiful and balanced chair when my promotion to the professorial position was announced in 2019. Distinguished audience, the journey was rough and cumbersome. But to the glory of God, the virtues I got from my parents, who were also teachers, saved me. At a time in his life, my dad had to hand me over to late Professor Razak Alabadenuga, who was one of his boys at the teacher's college on the side when the difficulty became enormous. My view is that 
Whatever position we hold today is temporary. It is only the Almighty God that holds a permanent position. I want to advise that the younger generation should be treated with politeness and dignity because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Today, I have been involved in encouraging, advising, and molding the lives of younger ones positively at all levels of education, determined that the world will not shift them for they are the leaders of tomorrow. Against this background, I have instituted an educational foundation in honor of my parents, from where over 20 indigents had benefited and at present about 10 indigents are on various programs at different institutions. Mr. Vice Chancellor and the distinguished audience, for the roles my parents had played in making today a reality, may I humbly crave your indulgence to kindly rise for a minute silence in honor of my parents, Shimusili Wade Sumbo and Mrs. Mudira Bidoke Adefesobi, and likewise for Professor Razak Alaba Adenuga. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. For this inaugural lecture, I have chosen the topic, the worship, those who cannot read. To do justice to this, I shall be guided by the following outlines, which will highlight my contributions to knowledge in the field of language education, which makes me a professor. The outlines are already displayed on the screen. Introduction. Literacy, as discussed by Saromi 1999 and Adekola 2007, is regarded as part of the process of learning to read and write, and this can equip one for the defense of one's political, economic, cultural, and human rights. Adekola 2004, in our findings on educational and job performance of English teachers, confirmed that reading and speaking English fluently, as seen in Nigeria, as a yasti for measuring the level of literacy and enlightenment. Individuals who are unable to express themselves correctly and fluently in English are seen as illiterate, even though they might be educated in other areas of life. To support this, Adekola et al. 2015, in their study, found out that the more widely people read, the more exposed they are, and the more meaningful their information, conversation, and discussion become. However, failure to do the above leads to problems of non-literacy. In agreement to this, Adekola 2008 revealed that positive attitude to literacy leads to greater interest and performance educationally. According to Ignit and Pollock 1997 and Adekola 2007, a functional literate person is expected to deploy language to idealize and realize goals in specific social contexts. Therefore, literacy is central to life and living, thereby indicating that it is embedded in the culture of life. Adekola 2008, in a study, submitted that through literacy, man acquired the civilization of the past, which enables him to take part in the civilization of the present and make possible the civilization of the future. Importance of literacy to human development. Acquisition of various skills and technologies that make life worth living in a dynamic society. 
It is also caution driven and which often responds to market forces for relevance. An attribute of human civilization which shapes man and transforms him from ignorance to knowledge, obscurity to prominence, and from passivity to activity. Ethnographical and anthropological dimensions which seek literacy in terms of mastery of spoken languages, reading, and writing. Conceptual meaning of reading. Reading is an intelligent behavior acquired by a literate person. Reading should not be seen as just parroting words aloud, but rather it should be seen as exploring the active, creative potential of a text and relating the meaning secured from the text to the culture of the man. Remarkably, the Nigerian society has been described as a non-reading one, as they call it 2008. Expressing agreement with this assertion, as they call it and Joe, 2013, advised that educators should be more creative and innovative in their teaching procedures, using appropriate literacy material to create suitable environment for functional learning. The purpose is to produce graduates who will come out sufficiently prepared to face the challenges of the environment and to survive without resorting to delinquent acts. Such graduates will become good readers, writers, communicators, and computer experts. Status of reading in Nigeria. Olokwe in 2004 revealed that the reading habits of Nigerians are very poor, diminishing the sale of enthusiastic writers. The reading culture is generally unimpressive, having a negative effect on the literacy level of Nigeria. It is regrettable that people do not engage in active reading anymore. Products of our schools are found to be deficient in their reading and writing skills as their performances in the two expressive skills are different with the other two receptive skills of listening and speaking. Adeluga 2015. This trend seems to negatively affect the reading and writing pattern in the country. Most students only read and write because they need to pass examinations, not minding the mechanical errors that slow down their reading achievements. This can be portrayed by the chief examiner's report of the SSE 2020 we shed light on the poor performance of candidates in English language. The report shows that many of the weaknesses observed in the scripts of the candidates have to do with insufficient exposure to reading. The reports regard expression as a very big problem among other things. The reports expose the problems as follows. One, most of the candidates cannot read and write acceptable English sentences. The problem is not only grammatical, but also semantical. There is general lack of familiarity with idioms of English, resulting in several un-English collocations. In addition to the above, mechanical accuracy has not improved. Students need to be careful with spelling, punctuation, and concord. Many compositions were seriously marred by poor punctuation errors and faulty grammar. It is disappointing 
that after six years of secondary education, many candidates demonstrated ignorance of correct use of the comma, the full stop, and the question mark, Adekola 2011. Status of reading in Nigeria. Nevertheless, reading is one area that is particularly problematic for students within the system. A great majority of them are failing to learn to read, and many more are unable to read to learn. There are many students at risk, and unless we come to their rescue, the age of darkness might be persistent. There is a general feeling that many Nigerian students do not like reading. Many teachers often complain about the poor reading habits among the students that can have implications on their personal and intellectual development. Uh, the statistics of the West African uh, May-June 2011 to 2018 has been displayed on the screen. Reading culture in Nigeria. Generally, this issue of lack of reading culture has been a source of worry to researchers in language education. This has driven many researchers into finding solutions to the problems and challenges militating against the reading culture in the country. Adekola 2008 studied the issue critically and found out that the problem was associated with the failure of most readers to comprehend and this impaired their abilities to summarize, which leads to reading deficiency. Symptoms of reading deficiency revolve around problems with finger pointing, regression, vocalization, soft vocalization, poor head movement, poor eye fixation, lack of concentration, emotional disturbances, and poor visual perception, among others. A man's reading habit thus describes the totality of his attitudes, interests, problems, and skills that are related to reading caution. Adekola 2015 confirmed that man's attitudes are mostly negative or sometimes ambivalent towards all the three forms of reading. Following the decline in the performance of students in English language, as presented above by the SHIP examiner's report, the findings of Adekola 2015 and 2019 revealed a major effect on the ability of students to achieve good reading skills. It was established that many students cannot spell correctly some common words that constitute the vocabulary of the daily communication, both at home and in school. Such words include accommodation, admission, committee, etc. There is a general ignorance of the correct use of punctuation marks, such as the comma, question mark, the full stop, the exclamation mark, and so on. The situation now, the situation has now been further worsened by the popular use of the social media as revealed by another study by Adekola Ito, 2019. Significance of reading. The educational value of reading has been clarified by Adekola 2019 
to be beyond mastery of language. Reading is one of the most important literacy skills. Reading is a tool for mastering other subjects in the curriculum. It is the major key to progress and success in learning. It is said that one has to learn to read in order to read to learn. Reading is the window through which a literate person can see the world far above his physical reach. Reading is the ability to recognize and comprehend graphic codes and symbols. Reading is fundamental to literacy. Readers are leaders. Those who do not read get lost from the world of knowledge and the happenings in the world. For effective literacy to be achieved, effective reading skill must be developed. Reading prof proficiency is the royal road to knowledge. It is essential to success in all academic subjects. Reading often relieves emotional tensions and gives insight into personal problems. Merits of reading. Adekola 2019 affirmed that if reading skill is properly taught, it will sustain the student's interest and thereby improve their performances in reading comprehension. The ability to read is one of the most important human accomplishments. Through reading, the knowledge of global events, past events, and current ones is acquired. The skill of reading with understanding is a prerequisite to extraction of information from books. Nations with high illiteracy level are handicapped to all walks of life. Reading is necessary for safety and efficiency, both at work and home. Reading ensures consistency of learning, which will definitely lead to the life enrichment. The ability to read at the highest possible level is essential to individual growth in the modern world. Reading is power. It develops the human mind and intellect. Learning how to read is like coming out of a deep hole. Reading is one of the language skills that can shape and develop the child's personality. Reading reduces ignorance and increases one's self-esteem. Challenges of reading in Nigeria. Adekola 2015 summarized the challenges of reading in Nigeria as follows. One, reading is generally seen as an elitist activity done mainly through the English medium. Two, increasing urge for formal education but unwillingness to read and study hard. Three, language policy. Four, crisis in implementation leading to confusion in the teaching of reading. Five, poor teaching stroke training programs relative to reading. Six, absence of a robust book industry and a weak production policy. Seven, poor and sometimes non-existent library facilities at school and community 
levels. Eight, the current unmanaged content among books, computers, home videos, and the use of text in mobile telephone communication has worsened the situation. Nine, lack of parental involvement. Ten, attitudinal disposition of learners. Reading and comprehension. Reading and comprehension have come to operate as one concept due to, the, to their logical interrelationship. Comprehension is the logical outcome of reading. It does not occur in the absence of reading. Neither is reading of any value without the reader comprehending the material he is reading. Reading comprehension is a tool for functional literacy. Comprehension means understanding or showing understanding of a reading text. The comprehension of a reading text is shown by the reader's ability to respond correctly to the issues raised in the text in question forms. At the color 2012, in a study on assessing the effectiveness of reading comprehension as a tool for functional literacy in Nigerian schools came up with the following findings. That if reading items are ambiguous or wrongly presented, textual comprehension is impeded. For good reading to take place, there has to be adequate textual comprehension. Slow reading habits are often as a result of difficulty in comprehending the textual content. The merits of reading comprehension emanated from Adekola's studies. One, weak foundations at the early stages of education. Two, lack of reading text. Three, poor reading environment. Four, certificate-oriented system. Five, general lack of interest as a result of political gains. Six, preference of own video and leisure, among other things, militate against reading comprehension. Adekola 2008. Technology and reading. Adekola 2015 pointed out that teachers must come to terms with technology and go in terms of their educational physiology. International Reading Association 2002, as quoted by Adekola 2009, urged educators to take full advantage of professional development opportunities in technology such as the internet. Systematically integrate internet and other ICT in thoughtful ways into the literacy curriculum, especially in developing the critical literacy essential to effective information use. Explore the instructional strategies and resources developed by other teachers on the internet. Provide equal access to technology to every student in the classroom. Regularly read professional publications, such as books, print journals, and online journals to stay current on the research and practical ideas of using technology to improve students' literacy learning. Join professional electronic mail li mailing list to exchange insights about effective instructional strategies. Know a variety of ways to teach reading.
concept of functional literacy. Functional literacy involves skills needed to cope at an adult level in everyday situations. As a result of the increasing complexities of modern societies, functional literacy refers to a situation where the individual must be able to read simple instructions, write legibly to communicate, and be able to make simple sketches when and where necessary to enhance communication. In addition, there, there has to be a mathematical ability for the individual to be able to keep records of personal finances and to be able to engage in simple commercial transactions. That was why Adekola 2012 called for the need to refertilize review of functional literacy. Roles of the educators in promoting functional literacy in the society. Educators are central to the implementation of the educational curriculum. A positive and dynamic educator we inspire and encourage the development of functional literacy through positive attitude. Good literacy habits and a demonstrated eagerness to improvise literacy materials. The educators are the role models. Their action, stroke, their attitudinal disposition affects individuals they groom in the society at large because the individuals are the leaders of tomorrow. The individual they grew emulate, imitate, and tap their experiences. Educators are expected to build their instructions on what is natural and functional to students. The benefits of functional literate adults in Nigeria. Functional literacy is not just reading and passing examination. It ensures development of character traits and instills some measure of discipline into individuals. It is also an instrument of change. Conclusion. Mr. Vice Chancellor, it is important to recreate the vital role being played by reading skill in the literacy of every individual. People who cannot read are non literate. Reading remains the only way of extracting information from both near and far. People who neglect reading surely invite backwardness. In Nigeria, unlike the advanced countries, reading still attracts a third class attention since the society obviously have a positive attitude towards paper qualification. With this background, sir, one will easily appreciate the full significance of the English epigram, reading makes the man and the title, the world sheets, those who cannot read. Recommendations. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, having analyzed the complex dynamics of the reading culture and its glaring absence in Nigeria, appropriate and useful recommendations are identified to ameliorate the unhealthy situation. One, there is urgent need for a more pragmatic, realistic, and feasible language policy in education 
as a prelude to conscious and consensual planning for the involvement of Nigerian languages in the literacy development of the populace. Two, bridging the gaps among educational policy makers, planners, executors, and language experts so that reading can be accorded, its pride and its importance can be felt in the society. Educational institutions should place greater premium on the teaching of reading. Emphasis should be given to both the cognitive and metacognitive aspects of reading. Reading and study skills should be cultivated in learners to stem the tide of examination malpractice. Government should intensify adult literacy campaign so that it can have positive effect on family literacy, which is the veritable foundation of the reading culture. This will make it possible for parents to appreciate the values of the family library and home literacy activities in general. Teacher training institutions must constantly evaluate their language education programs as they relate to reading pedagogy so that pre-service teachers can be well grounded in the right knowledge, attitudes, and skills that can foster the reading development of various categories of learners. Individual is the ultimate focus of literacy development. Learners need to realize that skills such as reading can only be mastered through constant practice, commitment, positive interest, and a lively attitude. Efforts should be made to revitalize literacy level in the reading skill. Without the change in the attitudinal disposition of individual, learners will still strive to become a functional and proficient reader. The world will continue to shit those who cannot read. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I want to state clearly that while education is about widening one's knowledge, widening one's knowledge is best achieved through reading so as to absorb the truth of life. In order, once you absorb the truth of life, you'll be great and the world will not be able to shift you. Acknowledgement. My gratitude goes first to Alas Buano Atala, my creator, the magnificent, be merciful for his mercies on me from birth till date, for giving me good health and this wonderful opportunity to deliver my inaugural lecture the Senate of the academic career. I humbly appreciate specially the Vice Chancellor, Professor Aguola Johnson Ayodej, and his team. I wish you, sir, a successful, harmonious, and peaceful tenure, sir. I wish to appreciate the former Vice Chancellors Professor Lai Ogunkoya, who employed me as a junior research fellow at the Institute of Education. Professor Afolabi Shoyode, who approved my transfer from Institute of Education 
to the defunct Department of Curriculum Studies and Instructional Technology. Thank you, sir. Professor Saburi Adejimi Adesoya, who appointed me a head of a head of part-time program at CSED, and Professor Ganiu Olatunji Olatunde, who appointed me the deputy director and later director of OOU Ventures, under whom I was promoted as a full-fledged professor. I thank you, SARS, most sincerely for the confidence reposed in you. I appreciate my late parents, Alaji Shiv Musiliu Adesumbo, head of state, and my mother, Alaja Mudirat Ibijoke Adefesobi Niobisoya, for their care, love, concerns, and good upbringing that nurtured my path, my well-being, and for the solid foundation laid by them. May Almighty Allah bestow his mercies on them and grant them a legion of redoubts. I express with joy I acknowledge the roles played in my life by my paternal family, the Adefeso, stroke Adefeso Bees, of Tigara origin, as led by Alaji Monsuru Adefeso and Mr. Suraju Adefeso. My maternal family, the Obisoyas of Tulubo, through my uncle, Bola Obisoya, and my marital family, the Adekolas, of Lukogbe through Alaji Ubeda at Olaide Adekola and the Oshiboye Jaws of Oni led by Otumba Moliki Oshiboye Jaw and lastly the Oyenuga family of Itautu through Alaji Aremu Oyenuga all in the waterside local government. I express with joy my heartfelt gratitude to all my teachers at all levels. I appreciate Mr. Shaki Ruali, who taught me at primary three. I don't know, maybe he's around now. Dr. G.D. Farajini, Mrs. Adeni, Mrs. Sotupate, Alaji Muib, and host of others. I also appreciate Mr. Tajudin Ganil, Mr. Tajuddin Ganil taught me at class one, from class one to class three. I don't know, maybe he's around so that I can stand for recognition. Mr. Tajuddin Ganil, thank you, sir. Mrs. Awoturue, Mr. Adenariwo, Mr. Bola Odumade, uh, Mr. Oreko Maya, Mr. Brimo, and others who were my teachers at the junior class and my able principal, Venerable Caleb Adi Odu. I don't know whether Venerable Caleb Adi Odu. Yes, he trained me so well at the secondary level. Uh, Venerable Adi Odu was my mathematics teacher. My Appreciation also goes to my teachers who taught me at NCE level, late Professor Alani Seriki, Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Wasiu Adeleke, who later turned to my Baba Oko, Professor Ojo, Professor Jimmy Ogunaike, Dr. Yomi Ogunawo, and others. I appreciate all my lecturers at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels, at the faculties of education and arts of Olabisi or Nova Anjou University. I am particularly grateful to my special academic father, Professor Okola Oyedeji. 
Please stand for recognition, sir. Professor Okola Oyedeji, who prepared me for the academic rigors and introduced me to research works and how to write good academic papers for publication. I appreciate all the associates, deans, and directors that I have worked with in the course of my career. I particularly appreciate Professor Mukaila Olasukon Badamoshi, who showcased Professor Mukaila Badamoshi. Stand up for recognition, sir. He showcased, he showcased my skills to the university community by appointing me as the faculty coordinator of the B.Ed. Sandwich Program during his deanship of the Faculty of Education. I express my heartfelt gratitude to my academic counselors, Professor Samson Dare, Professor Tai Wedu, Professor B. Yabosede, Professor Biodu Oguyemi, Professor Stella Enriosho, Professor Lure Miyadeshe Mowo, Professor Ade Jokeji Bowo, Professor Lekon Arike Uyo, Professor Lekon Dairo, Dr. Kayo Deoke, late Professor Enrita Benedict, and my sister and brothers, Professor Jumo Kebile Somi Awoderu, Dr. Bayo Salami, Dr. Akim Kazim, and Dr. Samuel Adeshino Okueso. I appreciate my supervisors at the doctoral degree level, Professor A.V. Jibowo and Dr. S.O.A. Oladujoye. I fondly remember the courageous defense put up by Professor Oladujoye during my post-field defense of my thesis when the road was rough. Let me specially recognize our spiritual father and mentor in the Olabisi Onobanjo University Muslim Community, Emeritus Professor Kamal Din Balogo, Robi Sidini Ilimasa. I wish to recognize posthumously the efforts of my brother, late Professor Razak Alaba Adeluga, who was always there to give positive advice and immediate responses wherever, wherever there were issues. The vacuum is yet to be filled. May Allah be pleased with him. I recognize and appreciate my deed and all others at the Faculty of Education. I also recognize the teaching and non-teaching staff at the university. I recognize the staff of CSED and Ventures, where I am presently the, uh, the director. I recognize the members of Nosirulai Lifati through the national president, Alaji, Mr. Mumuni Olani Yusu. I also recognize the presence of the leagues uh, of Imam and Alphas here today. May Allah be blessed with all of you. Also, I recognize all my friends, my childhood friends, uh, the 86 set of community high school, Ibiade, and all other friends. You are all wonderful friends. And also my brothers and sisters that are present here today. I appreciate most sincerely my students both and present that are all present here today. Um, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I want to recognize my siblings. They are also here. And also all my cousins that are here. And I want to recognize again my children. They are my joy giver, my source of joy. I have Kozi Madewale, Dr. Afiz Ade Risayo, Amzat Ade Jisayo, Azib Ade Bisayo, and my wives, Asisat and Rukoya, 
and my granddaughters, uh, Komoria Adeolami and Akima Adejiwura Ola, I love you all heartedly. Mr. Vice Chancellor, now my final gratitude goes to my cherished soulmate, my joy, my love, my crown, my heart, my pillar of support, my foundation molder, my adorable husband, my soulmates, Dr. Abdullah Kim Adebola Adekola. He inculcated the sense of duty and commitment in me. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I agreed and submitted to him as his future partner in his final year of his secondary school in 1985. I was a year, I was a year junior to him then. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, at that age, I saw three things in him. He was handsome, he was bold, and extremely brilliant. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am celebrating today the result of that thoughtfulness, the motivation, the sponsorship, the encouragement, the sacrifice, and lastly, the brilliant I saw in him. By the special grace of Allah, we shall live long to reap the benefits of our labor. I say, Jasakum like Kairan, so made me, Oma Parayagi Fofa, Oya Gilamo, Ten, Oma Lawa Shaggy, where Oma Ledum Buripo, Ripo, Oma Fujabanoni, Wara Fano, Moncana, Alia, Ali Amduni, Lai, Robili Alemi, Shukran, Kesiran. I thank all of you for your patience, endurance, and perseverance. I wish all Johnny Mercy. Thank you. I was built to be the best, number one and nothing less. Lead me to my destiny. I have waited patiently. I have vision, though I believe I know I can count on me So stand up for the champions For the champions, stand up, stand up Thank you very much. Um, in the first instance, I'm glad I can reach. So I cannot be cheated by anybody. Uh, Professor Adekola has professed, and in line with the university culture, she cannot be questioned here. Thank you very much. You will all agree with me that um, we have a very distinguished audience here covering the academia, the royalty, and other eminent Nigerians. Uh, once again, I want to welcome all of you. You deserve to be appreciated, and I'm going to do that in a moment. I'm going to start with um, the former Deputy Governor of Ogun State, a very good friend of this university, His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Adibenga Sefiu Kaka. You are most welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. We also have in our midst the Ogun State Commissioner for Agriculture, Dr. Adiola Adedino. You are most welcome. Thank you very much for finding time to be here. Um, we are privileged also to have in our midst the acting vice, uh, the vice chancellor of uh, FUNAB. Uh, actually, he has been here with us for some hours ago, Professor Olushola Babatunde Keide. We welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have the Vice-Chancellor-designate, Fountain University, 
Oshobo, Professor Mrs. Olayenka Karim. Thank you very much for coming. And indeed, we have here uh, our former Vice Chancellor, our dear father, um, one of those who really built this university. And I'm happy that the university is still growing. Professor Afolabi Shuyode. And Mama, we welcome you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we also have here um, a role model, a very distinguished university administrator, the foundation registrar of this great university, Chief Dr. Nathaniel Shoto Yimbo, and Mama. You are most welcome. You are welcome. Yeah, they started off this university. Thank you very much, sir, for finding time to be here with us. Um, we have the we have the Deputy Registrar, Vice Chancellor, Academic Affairs Office. Um, Ms. Uh, that's Professor. Oh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Christiana Ikeobi. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Um, I'm reserving the royalty because they are a special set of people. I'm, I'm going to give them a very warm welcome. Um, I have here also the Baba, the chief imam of Ijebu land, the chief imam of Ijebu land, and of course the chairman, League of Imam and Alpha of Ijebu land, Alhaji Ayobadijo Badegeshi. Baba, you are welcome. Uh, yes, we also welcome members of your uh, entourage because I saw you when you came in with a lot of people. You are most welcome, sir. Um, let me quickly take um, the provost, the provost of Baba Sikiru Adetono College of Education. I call him Baba because he's a great man. He's our own father here and he's doing a lot of things uh, for us here. Uh, that's Dr. Adiola Kiadeshe. Where are you? I think, yeah, thank you very much for finding time to be here. Now, let me quickly go to the royalties. Um, the host, the host of is represented here. Um, that's the Ebuma way of Agowe, ably represented by the um, Otumba Tajudi in Arowolo, the Otumba of Himosu, and uh, Ashiwaju Akimbanjo. You are most welcome. Our greetings to Baba. You're welcome. Then I have here the Ojo Tumoro of Abigi, Oba Barista, Olushegun Ogunye. Baba, you are most welcome. Eshe Gonsa, Adia Pelorio. Um, we have um, His Royal Highness Oba Antoni Kayode Alakija of Ikija. Baba, you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. We have the Likian of Ibefu, His Royal Highness Oba Gideon Adeshino Adetoye. You are most welcome, sir. Eshe, sir. We have the um, Oloni of Oni Waterside. On the water side, on the water side. Um, that's our uh, Baba Royal Highness Oba Ubikoya um, Abidaku. I hope I, correct, you know, I got that correct. We have the Omirokun of Irokun Kingdom. Uh, that's of water side, Oba Ola Balogun. We thank you, Baba, for finding time to be part of this auspicious occasion. We have the Olokine of Ojowo, Ijebu Ibo, Oba Abu Rashid, Adebayo Banjo. We thank you, sir, for coming. Abayo Thank you. Then, of course, we have the um, Ashiwaju of Ogun Waterside, Chief Dele Odulana. Odulaja, Chief Dele Odulaja. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we have here now, Mr. also, the former Deputy Vice Chancellor in this university, Professor Ebun Oduwole. Professor Oduwole, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, we have the wife of, uh, the amiable wife of our Vice Chancellor is also here, uh, Professor Arnold Agola. You are most welcome, Madam. The Nasfat family is represented. Can you please stand up for recognition? Nasfat family, you are most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are most welcome. 
And uh, we have our own students from Olabisi on Obanjo University International School. Can you please rise for recognition? International School students, thank you, thank you. I can see you over there. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you. And also the um, OU Primary School. OU Primary School, where are you? Thank you very much. Thank you, Edagbao. Thank you. Then we have uh, Alaji Dayo Oyenuga, Chairman of Ogun Waterside Forum. Thank you very much for finding time to be part of this. And of course, the Community High School um, Waterside is also represented. Well, thank you very much. We have my very good friend, the DPO of Agowe, um, SP Adekwane Noah. You are most heartily welcome. Um, then, of course, Dr. T. M. Salisu, the, uh, the chairman of the Muslim community in Ijebode. Um, if I have not covered you, please pardon me. I welcome all of you most warmly. And I thank you very sincerely for finding time uh, to be here with us. Well, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then shortly before that, I want to also appreciate um, distinguished professors and the uh, members of FUNAP family. Can you please rise up for recognition? FUNAP family here. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Very colorful. God bless you. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Yeah. In a moment, ladies and gentlemen, I, I will invite the Vice Chancellor to declare the inaugural lecture closed. But before doing that, I'd like to appeal to Ross that um, you are going to please stand and remain standing as we have the um, academic procession in reverse order. It is now my pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor DJ Abola, to declare this inaugural lecture closed. The principal officers of the university, members of Senate, our babas and mama that are here, spiritual and temporal, please allow me to recognize one person that um, we have not been able to recognize all this why, and that is Professor. Akre Duruale, the FUNAP Queen English Mama, the former Deputy Vice Chancellor Akrevis. And because we are, we are both Deputy uh, Akrevis almost the same time. And I would have said uh, a lot of things from her. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have had an interesting topic today. The world will see people that doesn't know how to read. And I'm very sure everybody in this hall knows how to read, so nobody will cheat you. So it's my prayer on behalf of Senate of this university to declare this inaugural lecture closed. Thank you very much. I wish you the same journey back to our respective destination. Please wish you remain standing. <laughs> 